Well, I think we're ready for um, Francois. Um, please go ahead. Thank you very much, Nico. I'm gonna to try to get the slide uh, running. Okay, here we are. So I'm, I'm the CEO and, and co-founder of Kepler. Um, for those of you who don't know Kepler, we are a, a data intelligence company with a focus on commodity market. So, so we've been in business for less than 10 years and in many aspects, we've acted as pioneers in our field uh, by designing innovative transparency solutions that are now widely used uh, across the industry. Uh, and so I would like to dedicate the next few minutes in giving you an overview of the journey that led us to uh, disrupt uh, community market uh, intelligence. So um, everything started for us in 2012. Um, we met with, with several uh, community traders in Geneva and one of them told us, uh, look, day to day my job is to trade cargoes and yet I keep receiving calls from people trying to sell vessel tracking solutions. But what matters to me is not the vessels, what's inside and the commercial story behind this. Um, behind this, this um, sentence, this trader was actually referring to a, a very common point in the CTRM value chain, which is a capture and treatment of what we could call the pre-trade data analytics. Uh, in practice, traders and analysts were spending a large amount of time collecting data sets from various sources and then trying to make sense of it by connecting the dots uh, manually or over a spreadsheet. So we, we, we sat down, uh, we looked around and, and realized two things. First one, there was a, a wealth of information scattered all around the internet from port lineups, vessels, transponders, countries, customs, official website, satellite data, maritime database, commercial reports, ship agencies, ship brokers, et cetera, you name it. It was like a large puzzle uh, and the market was only looking at partial piece of this big picture. The second thing was that uh, cloud application and AI technologies were already mature enough to collect, digest, and fuse together the large amounts of data, such as the one relating to community operations, and actually uh, quite close to what Petya just uh, just uh, just described. Um, and okay, so back then when we looked at all of this, we were a very small company, uh, uh, actually as small as it can get because we were two guys in my kitchen. Uh, and with these previous conclusions. Uh, <laughs> In mind, we built a prototype. We launched it a few months after, and it was looking at, at, uh, at it. I mean, looking back at it now, it was what I would call now the, the perfect product market, which is literally immediate adoption. Um, the industry was used to get partial data sets and dashboards for the shipping desk, something else for ops desk, and yet another solution for the trade analytics. And now all these different people had access to one single unified story on one single street. Um, it's also interesting to look at the reaction we had, because when we pitched the platform early on, uh, let's say the market was a bit skeptical. People were telling us, if I buy your data, can you remove my information from it? Like, can you just not track me if I buy it? Or uh, can I be the only one buying it? I don't want my competitors to look at what I do. Or uh, as well, we have people saying, but if I take it, I'm going to have to fire half of my team. Um, let's say that these initial reactions were a bit exaggerated. I think it shows a mix of attraction and fear, um, and uh, that is um, bringing the high level of market transparency uh, Kepler was unlocking. Um, now, the good thing is that um, the immediate success we had uh, with uh, the first platform, so it was the LNG one, um, was so intense that we never needed to raise any capital. We have been able to fund fully organically the growth of Kepler and all the development to lead to what we have today, which is a Kepler terminal. That will be my next slide. Um, yeah, so what about this uh, um, terminal? Um, it's the first, let's say, uh, a terminal dedicated to commodity uh, market transparency. It covers 25 commodities and it gives real-time intelligence on flows, inventories, and freight. Um, it is used by more than 5,000 users today, as we speak, um, who belong to the biggest commodity uh, players industry and the vast majority of the sponsors and attendees um, of this uh, virtual summit. We actually think that, that the fast uh, uh, let's say adoption of our solution is a real life proof of how eager the communist industry uh, was and still is to go towards digital solutions because um, let, let's face it, we didn't have any unfair advantage. Like uh, we don't have any prestigious name on our board. We never had any capital injection uh, at all, um, none of it. And actually we didn't even have 
any background in the communities before we, we start uh, six years ago. So I think we won our market share on one single fact, which is we deliver transparency at what I would describe as unprecedented level in the industry and the market needed it. Um, beyond the comprehensiveness of, of our data, I would like to add before to move to the next slide, it's worth noting that what's important as well is how do you connect this data? How do you integrate an existing workflow? Uh, because it can be, it can be a, nice, um, uh, uh, a nice tool to have, but it needs to be plugged. Um, and that leads me to, to this slide where I wanted to highlight, let's say, um, the two um, big uh, trends we see in our industry. So uh, I started this, this pitch today telling you about uh, the pain points we've identified in the CTM value chain early on. Um, currently, we see an inflation of the number of platforms trying to solve these problems. And a number of them have launched recently, uh, most of the time thanks to the influx of venture capital funding. Um, I, I would say today, well, what we are starting to see is what I would call a, a platform fatigue. Uh, from the market, which is essentially, I'm not sure there's that much space, say, space sorry, left uh, on the screen of our clients for yet new platform. So the key is really to make sure these platforms are fully embedded uh, in the client's workflow if they want to have a chance to capture a meaningful market share. And it's something we have seen with the, um, the COVID pandemic. It has dramatically accelerated the trend in the industry towards more digitalization and more integration. Overnight, thousands of commodity traders moved from super equipped trading floor to their very own kitchen with a laptop. Um, and um, in consequence, we've seen a number of our accounts asking for more users, deeper integration, and essentially having their workflow simplified because it's not as easy to work by yourself where you have been used to be surrounded by your entire team. Um, the second uh, big evolution we see is it relates more to the data uh, itself. Um, I think the industry, our industry is still uh, questioning the data quality of the providers and spends um, an enormous amount of time backtesting this data. Um, if, you, if you look at more established markets like, um, uh, like FX, fixed income or, or equities, um, I don't think um, really backtest is being backtested. Bloomberg is being backtested. I'm, I'm not sure about it. So we think that players at our scale are producing sets of data that at some point will become, um, let's say, benchmark commonly accepted by the industry. And a good example of this uh, trend is the recent announcement we've made um, with uh, market players associations like Gignal for the LNG, for IEA more recently, um, who are starting to use Kepler as well as one of the main reference. Um, on this note, thank you very much, uh, Eniko, and I'm uh, open for, for questions. Thank you, Francois. Um, we're going to go to Bill next, but um, just before we do that. Um, so there's been, I think you've, you've touched on it, but there's been a sort of, uh, a, a lot of these uh, startups, uh, sort of tanker tracker type startups, which seem to come onto the market recently, like Texa. Um, we've had them in, in Lausanne to our conference. Uh, Tanker trackers on uh, online as well. Uh, how does Kepler, you know, differentiate itself from them? How, what's your USP? That's a good question. Thank you, Rico. Um, look, first, I would say competition is is here, and we like it. Um, uh, honestly, before building Kepler, I've, I've built another company. We were in a very small market, and, and for a few uh, months, I was super happy to say I didn't have any competitors. But the reality is that. Um, if you don't have competitors, it means you don't have a market. We were in a super small market. So now we clearly have competition and we, we kind of, let's say, like it. I think it's a great incentive to push uh, the team and, and, and get uh, faster. So, so I think it, it's a very positive thing. And it shows as well that the market is, is, is big and it's getting deeper. Now, having said that, um, we have the first mover advantage. Uh, I would say it's important to know that uh, there were data providers before us, for sure, but none of them had invested in data technology like we did. And so by putting data technology at the core of our methodology, we came up with a super comprehensive set of data updated in real time. And, and that was very new at the time. Now, uh, as we continue to, to develop our, our real time transparency product, uh, yes, competitors have joined uh, and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, most of them are, are backed by the venture capital industry. Uh, but to date, we have kept our first mover advantage by always being one step ahead. And it's quite simple to understand. We have what I would call almost an unfair advantage, which is 
in the data space when you have large players, most of the large players in the industry using the same screen, so Kepler, and just questioning the data, having things they see, things they check with you, then it becomes a huge moat because they make the market and every day they check with us, they help us get, get the feedback. better. So um, I think it's, um, it's, uh, um, it's a market becoming, becoming much more competitive. Yes, indeed, uh, but we are in a, in a nice spot.